Okay, so this is Windows 10 running on the Raspberry Pi 400, and it's actually running pretty well. I'll go through what's working and what's not working in a minute, uh, but thanks to Sasha Zindel for letting me know about this. Uh, a couple of days ago, he let me know that it was up and running. I tend not to link things in my description because I've been in trouble with that before. Uh, Google doesn't like certain things being linked. So uh, what I'll do is direct you to my other video about Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi 400 where there's links in there and, a, and basic instructions on how to do it. I plan on doing a tutorial on it but I haven't got enough time today to do a tutorial on it. It's taken me a while to get it up and running and, and, and test a few things out but I'm going to test a few more things now anyway. So let's just switch over to screen capture and show you a bit about it first of all. Okay, so uh, the onboard Wi-Fi doesn't work. Uh, that's why I'm using a USB Ethernet adapter. Uh, the Ethernet connection also doesn't work as well. As a, if I plug in an Ethernet cable directly into the Pi 400, it actually crashes the system. So that's why I'm using this USB to Ethernet adapter. They're pretty reasonable from Amazon. Uh, this may get sorted out in the near future, but uh, for now, at least I've got internet running on it. So the keyboard and mouse work fine. I'm, I'm using a USB wireless mouse and uh, the keyboard, what if I call something up? So if I put in here settings, there you go. You can see that it's typing and it finds things uh, as it normally would. Uh, the onboard Bluetooth doesn't work, the onboard sound doesn't work, and as I mentioned before, the onboard Wi-Fi doesn't work. Uh, but uh, we can probably get away with this with Bluetooth, and I'll try plugging in Bluetooth in a minute. I thought I figured I'd do it within the video so you can see if it works uh, straight off, and I can test sound with that. Uh, if the onboard Bluetooth works, chances are we can get Bluetooth internet as well. So, you know, we can pretty much get this fully functional anyway. Uh, if I do control alt delete and uh, call up task manager just to show you the RAM usage and everything. So uh, these are the processes. We can go to performance and we can see the CPU, uh, the memory usage. So it's using 3.9 gig of RAM. So it's using all of the RAM of this 4 gig Pi 400. Uh, you can see the disk usage is low. I'm using it on an SD card. I haven't tried it on USB boot yet, um, but uh, the SD card seems to be working all right. It seems to be reasonable. The speed, I haven't overclocked. 1.8 gigahertz is the standard speed for the Pi 400. And as I say, it seems, seems to be working all right. I haven't disabled anything. Uh, I haven't messed about with anything. Uh, so this is just raw Windows uh, as installed the same sort of way as I use in my last method of installing Windows 10. Um, and then there's a few little tweaks, which is what those comments will help with. But as I say, I'll do a proper tutorial on it any anyway. Uh, so all of these have been populated now. They weren't populated before. They had to download uh, when Windows first installs. I've also installed the Edge browser, uh, which uh, it had the, well, this is the Chromium Edge browser. It came with the normal Edge browser, but as soon as I opened it up, it prompted me to download this one. So I've downloaded it and I prefer it anyway. Uh, so if I do a, a web search, for instance, hot UK deals, and we can see that it comes up all right, actually. It, it does feel fast. I don't know if this is faster on an SD card than it is on the Pi 4, because with the Pi 4 in my last video, uh, or one of the last videos, I showed it running with a USB uh, SD card reader adapter, and that was actually faster than the SD card in the SD card slot, but this is a different SD card reader, so there's a chance that this will run better because of that. Uh, so we do BC. Uh, it, it feels pretty snappy, you know. Uh, now, I haven't got any sound at the moment because uh, the well, there's no audio output from the Pi 400 anyway, it has to be done through the HDMI, but I'll switch screen capture to do that, and I'll try out, I think I'll come back out of screen capture to show me plugging in the USB Bluetooth adapter. Actually, while I, before I do that, let's just plug in a USB stick and show that it recognizes that all right. So at the moment, so I'm plugging in a USB stick now, uh, I've got my USB mouse plugged in, I've got my USB to Ethernet adapter plugged in, and I've also got a USB drive. Uh, and I think it just came up with something then. Uh, doesn't see, this version of Windows doesn't seem to have a, oh, I suppose I could go to documents and find it from there. There you go. So USB drive, and if I go to my SDIS folder, there you go. So that all comes up and works nicely. So I'll unplug that. 
And let's go back out of screen capture. So I'll show me plugging in the Bluetooth adapter and we'll see if we'll give that a test and see if we can get that working. Okay, so here's my little USB Bluetooth adapter. So let's try plugging that in. Uh, this Samsung bar I had in my previous video and it is a really nice fast USB stick. And I think we're gonna try uh, installing Windows 10 to that. It's a reasonably priced one as well, but have a look at my previous video if you wanna see about that. So let's plug this one in. Wrong way around and see if it recognizes it. Oh, Bluetooth's come up straight away. It's actually down in the bottom right hand corner anyway. God, that was quick, wasn't it? So add a Bluetooth device. Let's turn on my Bose speaker. Battery 80%. And let's put it in pairing mode. And let's have a look. Can you see all of the screen there? So add a device, Bluetooth. Come up with my speaker. It does it always does something funny on this Bose speaker where uh, one of them is sound, one of them is like an app driven thing. Um, so always click on the one that's the speaker. Connected to Raspberry Pi 4. Well, that was pretty easy. So connected voice stroke music, because it, there's actually a microphone in this. You can use it for, you know, like Siri and various different uh, voice control things. And I think you can even have a conversation through it. Right, so let's call up the browser, put one of my videos on. The PSP video uh, HDR. Click on that. Comes up different in Bing, doesn't it? It's not actually gone into YouTube, but it is a YouTube video. Yeah, and the sound is working via Bluetooth. Oh, oh spacebar doesn't pause the video because it's in, oh no it does, you just have to click on the video first. So sound is working, that's good to hear. Uh, let's just try something like, I don't know if this works through a web browser normally, I always use this for an app normally, tune in radio or Tune in home. Let's just pick a bit of LBC. They won't be playing any music. Oh, download app, LBC. Accept the terms. It's just gonna play in the browser. Hopefully it will. The Ford Transit Custom Plug-in Hybrid. Yeah, we get an advert. So that's audio working. Uh, let's have a look at the internet side of it. So if I unplug my ethernet adapter, and I'm gonna switch back in the screen capture to show this bit. Right, let's have a look at uh, Bluetooth again and see if I can get that paired. So if we just type in Bluetooth here. And I think I pair to my phone first of all. Add a device, wireless, everything else. Yeah, at least 64. So I've connected to my iPhone. Put the code in, 684061. So let's hit pair on my phone. I've got a separate video on how to do this, so I'm not gonna um, go through that uh, again, but it looks like it's connected. So not connected, connections are available. Uh, now, you had to go into the networking, pop it on that, show available networks. Network and internet. Oh, is it on flight mode? No, Bluetooth connected. Change adapter options, let's try that. Ah, here we go. Uh, Bluetooth not connected. So if I right click, view Bluetooth network devices, add the device. There's my phone. So click on the phone, right click it, and do connect using access point. Connection successful. 
No internet. Oh, no, we are. Just say yes to that. Yeah, and we have internet, and this is through my phone. So let's close these down. Oh, it's a bit reluctant to close that one down. Oh, that's because it wanted to update and say connected to Lee64, Bluetooth device. So let's try the internet. And let's just do, uh, let's do Raspberry Pi. There you go. A bit slower than the Ethernet adapter, but working nonetheless. I'll let it go and then go into that for quite, it's a lot slower. I wonder if it's, I've got it right next to my iPad. And for, oh, 4G is really, really low signal here. I've only got two bars. So that's probably why it doesn't work so well. Be a good idea to just move it to the other side of the room. There you go, it's working though. As you can see, the internet is working and depending on the connection your phone has got, uh, then you're gonna get better results from that. So I'm gonna do a tutorial on this anyway. I just haven't got enough time, but I wanted to get it out there. You can, if you want the information, if you use my uh, last videos, here we go, so on my channel, uh, if you go to the WOR playlist, there are loads of different ways of getting things to work here. Uh, I haven't tried my Vonitz adapter because I suspect it's not gonna work anyway because the wired ethernet adapter doesn't work anyway. It might do though. So in this playlist, all sorts of things in here. The one you're looking for, for how to do it. So the comments will be pinned on this video, uh, which is Raspberry Pi 400, Windows 10, nearly there. Um, but also the video that you need, this is the one to follow uh, together with that one, with the comments, and you'll be able to do it. But as I say, I'll do a tutorial if you don't wanna um, work through both of those. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.